Hello and welcome to Bonsai Journey. I'm Daniel Matthews and this is a video I've been wanting to do for a little while but the weather here in Lexington, Kentucky really hasn't been cooperating. So today looks like a great day. It's sunny, clear skies and we have a temperature of about 50-55 mm, degrees so it's not too bad. So I'm going to go ahead and show you this and this episode is called From Bush to Bonsai in Less Than a Day and actually it'll be much less than a day. Now today what we're going to be working with on this tag says a spreading juniper. Junipers make great bonsai trees, especially for beginners. And this is a spreading one, so it's typically one that people use for ground cover. So they'll plant this in an area where they want it to spread and cover the ground and, and make it look green and lush. But today we're going to be using this plant as bonsai stock. Now one of the first things that you have to do, and, and normally uh, when you do this, the first thing you have to do is take it out of the pot and you want to expose the trunk of the tree. So that's what we're going to do first off, is we're going to try to take this thing out of the pot without making too big a mess. As you can see, it's a rather large pot, and uh, as, we, as we pull on this thing, it's, it's, the roots are kind of pulling away, so I don't want that. I want to try to make sure that as I pull this out, it kind of stays, there we go, I'll just tilt it on its side. So now we have the empty pot, we just toss that away for now. And what we have now is just this big massive chunk of dirt and not just dirt, but roots. It's full of, full of roots. Now the very first thing we want to do is, is if you look at this, I mean, uh, just, just take a look at this. The, from the top of the soil to the top of this juniper just goes to to the uh, bottom of the handle on my my clippers or my uh, branch cutters so you can see that it's not a very tall plant but what's going to be interesting is the transformation of this oh well, maybe what is that six inches at the most transforming that six inches into something that's even taller than that that actually looks like a tree instead of this this bush or this blob if you will and so the first part of that process is to actually pull away and using a, a rake or, or some tool like this what we do is is we just kind of comb away and, and it really is like combing you want to comb away through that dirt and you want to expose as much of that trunk as you can so that it looks like a tree when you're when you're finished with it and so again everything about bonsai journey is about patience and taking your time and and working through everything so this is a process you don't want to hurry necessarily I mean once you get good at it you might be able to do it a lot faster but the idea is that that you don't want to destroy the roots and on a plant like this uh, you can see how large this root ball is. It's at least, I don't know, a foot tall maybe. And so there's a lot of roots in there. And we will be able to do away with much of those roots. Uh, but first we need to, to get to the point where we're exposing the trunk on this, this tree. Or what we, what we hope to be the trunk for this tree. And the great thing about these, these junipers, these spreading junipers, is you never know what you're going to end up with. You never know what the, the tree, the ultimate tree, is going to look like. And that's part of the fun of this whole process, is exposing, exposing the tree that is within this juniper. And uh, to me, it looks like a lot of the roots, or it looks like, which is not typically the, the situation. Typically, when you find these things, they've got an inch or so of the trunk buried in in the dirt before the roots even start growing but in this case we we have roots that uh, or the roots are right at the top of the soil so this must have been in this pot for quite some time and so we're just going to kind of work away at that and see how much if any we can expose and again like, like i said you may do this with one that you picked up from the nursery and find that there's another inch or two inches of trunk below the soil line and that's perfectly okay. The whole idea is to, to expose the beauty of this, this juniper 
in the form of a bonsai instead of just a bush or some ground cover that is in a garden. It's about that transformation and it's kind of like life. You know, in life we have, have uh, start out one way and we think we're going in one direction and at some point we change directions and we turn into something else. And that's, that's what the joy of bonsai is. It's, it's about taking this, this tree or this bush, if you will, and finding, finding out what beauty lies within. Now, now I've combed away a lot of the dirt there. You can see, you can see that we have just a lot of roots right here, and uh, so that's great. But now, what we want to do is we want to find the main main branch of this of this tree or this bush. And here it is, right here. Uh, and hopefully, you can you can see that it comes out of the ground here, and then almost at a 90 degree angle, and it comes up here and twists around in this way. So this. This is the actual trunk of the tree. And then we have all these other, other limbs or branches coming off of there. And they're, they're obstructing the trunk. Now there's, there's, a, there's something that can be done with this that's a little unique. Uh, they, there, there are semi-formal bonsai, which is what we're going to make from this. It's a, a bonsai that doesn't have a straight trunk. Uh, then there are what we call cascade, cascading bonsai, and that's where the bonsai is potted in a much taller pot, and and the uh, branch or the main trunk cascades over that long pot and grows down. Just like so, if 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 you if none of this existed, this would be like a cascading bonsai, just this part right here. And then you have semi-cascading bonsai, which grow uh, a vertical main trunk and then they have a smaller trunk that cascades over the pot so in this case we could easily turn this into a, an informal cascading bonsai by creating a main trunk and then having it cascade over the pot the problem with that is that all my pots and are, are like this so it, it would it would be dragging on the ground so, I mean, I could technically do this in a semi-cascade and then later on get a, a deeper pot. So, you know, I, I'm thinking I might just play with that idea, is, is to go ahead and plant it as a semi-cascade and then in the future get a different pot, and sometime in the near future. Now, let me just show you, you've seen this before in my previous video. This is, this is the same, this is the same type of juniper that this is and as you can see the trunk comes up and around and right now it's it's a little overgrown which is good what I wanted it to do between last year and now is to grab to to have some more uh, depth in the actual branches or what we call pads this is a pad this is a pad this is a pad these down here this growth down here is something I'm let letting grow uh, the reason I'm doing that is we call it a sacrificial branch and a sacrificial branch is just something that's at the bottom or growing out of the bottom of the trunk and the reason we let it grow is to help thicken the base of that trunk so the whole idea behind bonsai is that that at the base of the trunk it's wider and it tapers as you go up and so this has some really nice gradual taper which is good but it could benefit from a thicker trunk and so right now that's why we're allowing this growth down here at the bottom and we'll continue to let that grow and we'll we'll keep watching it and there's actually some growth back here so it's gonna it's gonna thicken the trunk all the way around but believe it or not this was this same type of juniper before I turned it into a bonsai and then later on we'll we'll talk more about this as we start to this year start to really form and work on the pads and a pad is just that pillowy green that kind of looks like it's floating out there and there's lots of air you can see the air space between here and there but again this is just one example so I think I think uh, I think I got lucky with this in that I can actually turn this into a semi cascade tree but the very first thing that we need to do is we're going to cut away some of these lower branches 
So if I know it's hard to see, you probably can't see, but right, right here, this branch right here is growing out of the bottom of this. And for now, what we want to do is we want to expose that trunk. So what we're going to do is we're going to cut that off so that we can see the trunk a little better. And as you can see, that opened it up quite a bit. And there's a couple other branches here, and I'm gonna cut them off. Now, here's the thing. When you're, when you're creating bonsai and when you're doing this, when you're cutting this off, don't be afraid to cut it off. It's, it's okay. You know, a tree is, is, is resilient, and what will happen is if you made a mistake, no big deal because it will grow back, and then you can just leave it. You can, you can let it grow. But there are several branches lower down here that I want to take off because I really do want to emphasize the lower trunk. So you can see we've already cut off a couple pieces. One fell off down there. This is our cascading branch, so we're not going to cut that off. Uh, we've got some more lower branches down here, so we're going to cut those off. And so as you can see now, so just to, just kind of picture this, if you will. Now, what we'll do here in a little bit is we'll work on we'll work on creating this, uh, making this go up a little bit more. But now, what you have is is let's say that uh, you were hiking through the mountains and and there was a, like a cliff or a ledge or something like that. You might you've probably seen trees growing in the rocks. Well, this is kind of what will happen in that case. You know, the the trunk will grow out of the rocks and part of the tree will grow down while uh, the rest of the tree will grow upwards and you get that cascading effect. And one of the things that we want to do when we look at this is, is to be able to expose that trunk. And so we have, we have a couple more branches here that we want to cut off just to get them out of the way. And what I'll do at the end of this, and this one we'll get rid of it as well, at the end of this, I'll kind of pile all this up so you can see how much was actually cut off of here. So now you can you can begin you can begin to see that trunk and, and just these little little ones. You can just kind of pull those off. You don't necessarily even need to kind of well that was a little bigger. I probably need to cut that one off, but cut that off. And so now we've we've exposed that trunk, and this is our cascading branch. Now if if you look, or we'll turn this around. For you now if you look below you've got you've got the trunk the main trunk that goes up this way and then you've got a branch here and you've got a branch here and then you have a branch here and a branch here uh, what I think I'm going to do is, is is if you see this right here this is dead so we're gonna go ahead and cut that off and again it doesn't matter maybe maybe it would look fine with that maybe it, but it's dead and, and we'll just get rid of it for now because what we want at the end of this is a, is a decent looking bonsai. And uh, so now we, we've uh, seen what's below here. We've got, got a small branch here. Uh, and it's actually, it's actually on the same side as the cascade and it's opposite uh, this bigger branch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and cut those off and the reason I'm going to cut those off is because we kind of want an alternating pattern if we can or whenever possible uh, when creating a bonsai tree. So you might have one here and then up a little higher on the other side, then you'd have another branch. So that's kind of the concept that we're looking for. And so there's all these smaller branches. And what I need to do now is I need to really figure out what is going to be my apex. Is it going to be this branch or is it going to be this branch? And to be quite honest with you, I think it's going to be this branch. It's it's going to reduce uh, my uh, it's going to reduce uh, the height of it just a little bit. But what I like about it is that it gives me more of a taper. This branch is much thicker than this branch, and so I want that taper. I've got this this uh, marker sized tree trunk, and then it comes into a slimmer piece and then it gets even slimmer, slimmer, slimmer all the way up. So I think what's going to happen is this is going to get cut away. And to do that I'm going to use my concave cutters so I can get in there a little easier. There we go. And uh, see if I can clean that up a bit. 
And now this is my very first, and again, I've, I've said this uh, before, but I am not, I am not an expert. So this is my very first semi-cascade bonsai tree. And uh, so we're going to see, see what it looks like when it's all said and done. And that's going to require some wiring to get the branches the way they need to be. And so now we have we have a branch growing at the bottom here. So the idea is we want to we want to expose that trunk. So we want to cut all those bottom ones or anything that's pointing downward. We don't want any downward facing uh, branches or buds that will grow into grow into uh, branches. So what I'm doing right now is I'm just plucking all these little baby soon to be branches off the bottom of this so that again we want to be able to see the trunk line we want to see the way this tree looks so anything that's on the bottom i'm just plucking off that didn't come off so easy there we go so if, if you can see now I've, I've cleared i've cleared on this one i've cleared off all the the growth that was underneath and i want to do the same thing on this one and there's some ones that are growing to the side and they're kind of dead or dying and what you'll notice about these type of juniper junipers are so thick that you get a lot of uh, dieback and the reason you get that dieback is because it doesn't get any light or exposure so by creating it or turning it into a bonsai you can really open it up let the light through and let it really thrive as a, as a tree One off. All right. Let's see here. Now we've got a lot of a lot of growth in here, and it's got some dieback down in the middle of it. And again, we want to expose that trunk as much as we can, but we really need to to be able to see what's going on. And uh, now we have the cascade, we have the main branch, and then we have this. Now this. Uh, this is the one that I'm going to keep as the main branch. As I said, this one, this one is so much thicker and it's kind of uh, strange looking. So I think I'm going to keep, of course when I do that, there's not going to be much you can do there. So let me see what, what, is, what other options I might have. So I've got this branch that's kind of, kind of in a weird place on the back side there. What happens? What happens here? Let's see. So what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to create the pads, just like I had on that other one. I need to figure out how I'm creating pads for this tree. So here's a nice branch that comes out. Uh, just need to clean it up a little bit so that there's some separation. So these would be my two. I would have to say these would be my two first branches of this main, and that's that's what we're looking for. So I think. What I'm going to do is I'm going to clean up some more of this back here because again I want to be able to see that trunk and uh, the curvature of that trunk and the way so we're going to cut some of this out. So doing this is kind of like giving a tree a haircut. Again, I've got a lot of little growth, little tiny growth that's hiding underneath here. And getting rid of that, well, one, will allow the light through so the, the parts that I want to keep will thrive. And it will also <clears throat> keep some of that other, the, the stuff that we want to keep from dying. And so where I have two branches growing out of the same spot, I, I cut the one that's least useful out and then uh, because what will happen is, is is if you have too many branches growing from one place it'll cause that part of the trunk to get really thick and what you what you want is you want a trunk that goes up like this you don't want a trunk 
that is wide at the bottom, then goes narrow, and then gets a big hump in it. You don't want that. You want you want your tree to, to have that taper, gradual taper all the way up. So that's what we're doing right now. So we're just kind of clearing away some of the mess on the trunk. And again, if, if I do something that screws this up and makes it look stupid, you know what? The good news is it will grow back. And so that's not really that big a deal. And that's why, that's why junipers are great for beginners. And, and I certainly consider myself to be a beginner when it comes to bonsai. Uh, I'm definitely not the expert. And I know that if I make a mistake with this, it will, it will come back and it will be beautiful eventually. And again, it's all about the process of creating bonsai, or that journey of creating bonsai. So now we have a couple branches here that are in the same place. So I'm gonna cut this smaller one out because I really don't like it. <clears throat> but as you can see, we've cut away quite a bit. And we have a little bit more down here. But we cut all that off. We removed a lot of the, the dirt, and we've created what I think is I think this is a beautiful cascade. And we'll we'll lighten this up here in just a little bit as well. But right now I, I really want to focus on what I'm going to do here. And this is probably the most difficult part of bonsai is figuring out what to cut away and what to keep. You know I have these two branches right here. Either one could be the main main trunk. And so what I have to think about is for the long term, what is going to look better for this tree. And so right now, even though it's not going to leave me much in terms of, you know, the way the one that, excuse me, the one that I showed you earlier, it's not going to leave me much in terms of pad. But what, what it will do is it will give me the framework that pads can grow from and then I can coach coach the tree in that direction. So I think I think uh, even though it seems like a really harsh thing to do, I'm going to cut this bigger one off. You know, even though it, it uh, I think I'll use my branch cutters. This one's a little thicker, and I think in one of the videos I talked about you know these things are important too. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and cut that off. And as you can see, that, that dramatically changed uh, the way this, this looked. It, it certainly does not look like it did when I first uh, pulled it out of the pot or when you saw it in the pot. So we, we took away a lot of this material. Now the trick will be to turn this into, like I said, from bush to bonsai in less than a day. And we have several little branches here and I think the next step that I'm going to do is I'm going to figure out which ones I'm going to cut off so that I can get that alternation from left side to right side to left side to right side back and forth back and forth but before I do that what I want to do <clears throat> is I want to wire this this main trunk so that it's more erect I'm going to try to give it kind of a kind of a an S shape so I'm going to try to to bend it around so that this comes back around and, and this ends up over here pointing up. But to do that, I need to put some wire on this tree. And now what I have to do is figure out how I'm going to attach that wire. Normally what you would do is you would put the wire in the ground and you'd wrap it around and all the way. So that's probably what I'm going to have to do, even though uh, we have this, this knot right here that will eventually rot off. And, and this part of the tree is not flexible. It's, it's not going to move. Now, I could make it move. Of course, the whole idea behind bonsai is to, to create what you want, but these are what are called branch cutters. And what you do is you clamp the branch like this, and then you squeeze and you cut all the way through until, until both jaws meet, and you repeat that process all the way up the branch or at least in that thicker area that you want to bend. And by doing that, it gives, gives that branch the flexibility it needs to bend and twist and do whatever you want. 
And of course, one other thing that you can do is you can wrap that area that you've cut or use the, the branch splitter on with raffia, which is something you can pick up at Michael's. It's just a, a kind of a, a, I don't know how to explain it really. It's, it's, a, it's organic material and it comes in strips and you put multiple strips together, soak it in water and you wrap it around there. And then that helps protect the tree bark and it also helps keep that, that area that you cut with the branch cutters, it helps keep it uh, firmly together and keeps it from uh, having or splitting apart as you twist and bend this tree. So that's what raffia is used for. But I'm not going to do that because I really like, because I can pot, when I pot this, <clears throat> when I pot this, see how this comes up and over like this? I really like that. And, and this was growing so that this was at a, at a night, uh, um, was uh, straight up and down. And, but when I pot it, I'm going to pot it so this is at an angle. And then I can just twist this part of the thing to make it come back around. So I think that's what I'm going to do now. And I have, and again, I think in my previous video, I talked about the importance of using or keeping your wire so that you're, you're, you're not wasting it. So this is some wire I used in a previous tree for bonsai. So I'm just going to stick that in the ground and hopefully it should be long enough uh, to, to uh, actually wire, wire this. So we're gonna, we're gonna see how that works out. So I'm gonna bring it around here, and then up and over. Now the idea when you're wiring is, is you don't want to trap all these branches. You don't want to pinch them off with the wire. So you have to be very careful in the wiring process. So I've got this branch. I don't want to lose it because I, I may end up cutting it off, but until I decide, I don't, want to, I don't want to ruin that. But what I will do is I will continue to take off all these smaller ones that are on the bottom because I really don't care about those. I really don't care about the ones on the bottom. So now we're going to go between there and there we go so we don't want to trap as we go we don't want to trap anything and here after a bit I will show you I'll bring the camera in closer so that you can see what's going on when we talk about wiring and as I go again I'm just going to cut off all these bottom ones that I don't really care about uh, that, uh, because we want to be able to see see the trunk and we also want to be able to see one more wire. So I think this wire will be the perfect perfect length. That's another thing that you'll get used to doing is figuring out how much wire to use. And again, I'm just reusing. I'm recycling right now. And uh, I, I really believe in that. Again, bonsai wire can be really expensive. So as much as you can, you know, save yourself some some time and money by reusing what you can when you can so that this hobby this which is supposed to be fun doesn't end up costing you an arm and a leg now I'm using a relatively thick piece of wire in this case uh, and it's because it's it's leftover wire. This is not necessarily the gauge wire I would use or size wire, but this is four millimeter wire that I'm using. Uh, but I'm using it because it was left over, and it's right here. And uh, it will do exactly what I need it to do. Now the good thing about bonsai wire, which is made out of aluminum, is is it's easy to bend. You know which is if you were using copper wire, which, which people do use copper wire, if you were using copper wire, it would be harder to bend and when you go to unwire the tree, most times what you end up doing is having to, you have to cut it because it, it's almost impossible to unbend, if you will, once it's wrapped around the tree. And you can see now that I'm using a pair of pliers as I get to the very end. And that's because regardless of the fact that it's aluminum, 
you know, short pieces. Short pieces are hard, hard to bend. So we want to get that. All right. So now all this is pretty flexible right here, and I may come back after a bit and do some wiring there if I need to. All right. So. So now that I have this curl in it, or this uh, 3D S shape, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this off right here. And the reason I am is because you don't typically want branches growing on the inside of the curve, or as they call it, the elbow. So we don't want, we don't want the, the branches growing to the center. So we're going to cut those off. So we'll do the same over here. We'll cut these branches off, these little bitty ones anyway. They're just clogging everything up. All right, let's see here. Okay. Now, when we think of pads for a bonsai tree, we, we like them to be flat. So we cut everything off on the bottom so that we can see the underneath of the trunk. But then what we want to do is we also, if, there's, if there are ones that are growing straight up, we want to cut those off as well because we want to be able to, to create a pad. And right now, this is just this big blob right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start trimming this so that we don't have any upward growing branches. So all we'll have are the ones that grow out this way. And again, as I said before, this, this is kind of a tedious process. It's a, it's a process that it doesn't happen overnight. Of course, when we get done today, you will have, if you, if you go through this process and and yours will probably look way better than mine. Uh, the, the end result, at least in the, in the beginning stages of this, really has to do with uh, the stock that you have. And uh, I just grabbed this. It was like $19 <clears throat> at Lowe's. So I just grabbed it because it was cheap and it was there. And I wanted to create another juniper bonsai. And. Uh, starting to get there and I'll show you here in a minute uh, so so as you can see I've, I've taken quite a bit out and I'm going to continue down but as you can see this because this is a creeping juniper it's everything's pointing down here and after a bit I'm going to take some smaller wire and I'm going to create this pad so that it sticks out more like this Now, I want to show you something here real quick. <clears throat> and uh, I'll pro probably have to do it closer up in the camera. But if you see this, see, see this tip right here? We could just, you know, if you wanted to shorten this, you could just come in here like this. And you could, you could cut it like that. But then what you've done is you've just cut across all those little branches. Ideally, what you want to do is you want to decide, okay, where do I want my branch to end? What, what do I want? What piece do I want to be the end of the branch? So in this case, if I want this piece to be the end of the branch, instead of just chopping all this off, I'm going to come in here and cut that off 
right? And then if I say, well, okay, that's still too long, let me shorten it. I'm going to come in here and I'm going to cut it just above there. So then this becomes the tip of my branch. So don't just go in there and hack it off like you would like your bushes in your front yard. Take some time and figure out where you want that to be. And yes, I'm just cleaning up after myself. But again, I, I want you to see how much we take off of here uh, by the end of this process. So you can see how dramatic the, the change is. And, you know, in life, you know, we think about, think about ourselves and as people and uh, how much stuff do we carry around that we don't need? Well, in the case of the bonsai, they carry around a lot of stuff they don't need in order to to show their true beauty and uh, even though this is about bonsai i really think bonsai the journey of bonsai is kind of like the journey of life in that it's all about uh, cutting away what what uh, what's not working for us and emphasizing what is working for us and so so now what we have, you can see, so look at how different that is from before. And then later on, as, as these get a little stiffer, I'm not going to worry about it now, but these branches will eventually get wired and they'll get trimmed. But the one part that I am going to wire is just, just this part so that I can raise, raise it up. So again, if, if, this, if this is going to be potted like this, I'm going to raise this up to this, this height probably. Okay. So, there's that one. And now, what we can do is we have two branches here real close together. And we don't need both of them. So we need to figure out which one we want to keep. And since I'm going to cut this one off over here, I think I'm going to cut this one off, the lower one off. And I'm going to keep that one. And then this one, the reason I'm cutting, the, the reason I said that is because this next one is kind of dying. So I want to go ahead and get rid of that. I don't want to, I don't want to keep anything that's, that's dying. Okay. And so then again, we don't want anything on this inside curve. So we're going to take off all those inside curve things. Now, let's see, how's this branch look? Yeah, okay. So... So here's a branch that uh, is kind of growing in line with it, but it can be pulled over to the side. So the, this will be another branch. It's not. Remember what I said about alternating. Uh, it's not always. It's not always. We have rules in bonsai, but the rules don't don't always apply or all, don't always allow you to do what you need to do in order to make that that work for you and uh, I like that and I like this but I think it's it's crowding it's creating too much of a it's creating too much too much yeah too much that's much better and uh, again when I when I told you at the beginning of this or earlier when I started trimming these you know I this may not look like much when it's when it's done today. Uh, it will it will have a good start though as to what a bonsai looks like. So see, we can get some height by planting it at an angle. We can get that height that we want. The other thing that we want to do is we want to figure out what the front of this is. And that's kind of what you do in the beginning. But this was, to me, was kind of a difficult one to decide uh, because of the way things looked and the way things were. Uh, but I think, I think this is going to be the front of the bonsai. And uh, because, because this is where you can see the trunk, the trunk line. And it also hides this ugly cut that we made, which will eventually heal up. But again, uh, 
we, we don't want to see that. So I think what I'm going to do, uh, let's see, I'm trying to trying to figure out trying to figure out what to do with this. I'm going to go ahead and kind of take take this out because I just want to set it in a pot for now to kind of help me figure this out. And sometimes you got to do that. Sometimes you got to you got to figure out what to do by putting it in the pot. So we got some bigger roots down here that uh, kind of holding on. And again, you can cut roots. It's not not that big a deal. See, I've still got quite a bit of roots. And this is the pot that I'm talking about putting it in. So I, I need to think about how I want this tree to be displayed. So the cascade would probably go over the side and then I have to figure out, okay, which, which, is, which is the better front for this tree? And that's, that's a really hard choice, I think. I'm wondering if, yeah, that, that really is stiff. I wish I could bring this up, and I, and I could. I would just need to take my branch cutter so that I can make it more flexible, but I don't think I really want to do that. I think, I think the idea will be to plant it like this. So I think for now it's going to be planted like this, and then we'll bring, we're, we're going to tilt this back so that so that it's not not like that, right? We want to have we want to have some some movement to the trunk. We don't want to just be straight up and then 90 degrees. So we're going to plant it at a slight angle, and then we'll get that curvature up uh, and and uh, see what's see what's going on. So I think I think for now that's the way it's going to be. Now I just need to finish <clears throat> cleaning up the main trunk and uh, giving it some air here. So again, anything that's on the inside of the curve, I'm gonna cut off. So we're gonna go ahead and cut all that off if it's on the inside. And that will open it up, give, give us the air or the space that we were talking about before. See all these go out. Here's one that's right there. Get that off. All right. There we go. So, yeah. All right. Now I know this is kind of. <clears throat> it's, it's not very dramatic right now, but. So we have our first branch. Eventually this will get wired this way. So that's our second branch, our third branch, our fourth branch. Uh, and then we'll probably have another one coming off the back side here. And then we'll see how this develops over time. And then, then what we have to give this tree some depth is we also have this back branch. So it's important for your tree to have balance. You can't just have everything uh, in front. But I want you to understand that that these will be wired so that they go out in alternating directions. <clears throat> and I think as I, as I look at that, as I want to give that a little more upward movement. Yeah. And I may take, start down here with a smaller type of wire and, and bring, this, bring this around. Yeah. I, like, I think I, I think I, I think I'm liking that. I, I think I like the direction it's going to go. And so part of this is the the process is over time to see what happens. So it's a little bushy here. We're going to take that out. All right, now we got that. We got two close together. Take that out. There we 
got like two real close together there. Get rid of that. All right. We got two right there. So we can keep that one. Get rid of this one. That one. Yeah, I think that'll work. It's always a process trying to figure out okay, what really is the front? And I do like this as a back branch, and I think over time these other branches, as they get bigger and thicken up, will really look good. And we've still got still got some insiders here. I need to get rid of those insiders. One more. All right. Now this one is okay because it's kind of at the top of that thing. So what are we going to do here? I'm going to cut that off. A little piece. And alternate. Get rid of this one. Again, we're alternating. So we're going to get rid of that one. And then we got that one. And I think I'm going to keep that one because it's big enough that we'll be able to wire it soon. Alternate. Alternate. Here. Here. So this one comes off. This one comes off. This one comes off. This one comes off. And then I'm going to just leave the rest alone. But uh, so basically what I've done is I've, I've given space between these branches. And again, as they grow out, uh, they will look much better and we'll be able to form pads with those. But for now, I think that's about as good as we can do with this particular uh, juniper, creeping juniper. So now I'm just going to decide the exact angle that I want to plant this in. Uh, and I think, so it's going to tilt back there. So I do think I need some wire maybe some wire to kind of finish finish this off maybe make it a, a little more curl there so I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to add that wire and then I'll go ahead and plant it. And so I'm going to use a smaller wire because I really don't need I don't really have anything heavy duty that that I'm going to be uh, wiring and again, I want to wire in the same direction as I did before, and I want to see how I can anchor this. And I'm just going to anchor it to this. wire that we already have. It's, it's not the be most beautiful wiring job. At, at, at this point, I'm not really worried so much about beauty in the wiring as I am the actual uh, shape of the tree, because we can come back and, and once, once we get the shape we want and it starts to set, then we can come back and, and do some more or wiring that's that's uh, a little more beautiful, if you will. Uh, but again, the same same thing applies here. We don't want to we don't want to trap we don't want to trap any branches, but we do want to make it fairly snug. And because I cut away, because I alternated my branches, it's making the wiring a, a little easier to do right now. And this part here now. Right here, this, this section here is brown, and this section is green. So this is all new growth. And uh, so it's, it's way more flexible uh, 
uh, than, than the older growth. But we, we want to be very careful that we don't damage it in any way. So let me see. So this is, this is the front. It's going to lean back a slightly. And then we're going to bring that curve around and up like so until, until we have kind of that apex. Yeah, I think that's, that's a lot better, a lot better. So I'm just going just gonna to kind of curl this around a little bit and cut off that excess by my little wire cutters. There we go. <coughs> now, so as I said, it's going gonna, it's gonna to set back like this a bit. We've got the cascading part that's going to go over, and then, then we have... Uh, we have this kind of curly Q thing going on here with the uh, the branch. Let's see. Okay. It's easier to do this from the front. So let me pot this up. Well, first of all, yeah, let me pot it up and then I'll wire that. But I don't want these roots to, to get dried out. So I'll go ahead and get some of the soil in there. And we're just going to reuse this stuff because this is what this particular plant has been enjoying uh, since it was planted. So we want to keep up with that. Now there is, again, specific bone size soil that you can make or create if you buy all the, the materials to do that. But I really, <clears throat> and, and I will do that with uh, my bone size as they get more mature and, and they get bigger and I want to put them in smaller pots. But for now, I just want to make sure that these survive. And the best way to do that is to give them what they're used to. And that is this very same soil. And actually, uh, let's, let's go ahead and do this right. So. I, I've told you before that you know you want to you want to wire your bone size, especially when there you can see this kind of moves around, and this soil is really loose, and it's very organic and loose, and it's it's not going to compact, so that that's never really going to be stable in there. So what we want to do is we want to wire this in, uh, and that will hold it in the pot, and uh, keep it from moving, so that once we're once this is potted, you can grab the the trunk of this tree and you can pick the whole thing, pot and everything up. And so let's do that. <clears throat> and I think I'm just going to use I'm just going to use some one millimeter wire for that. It doesn't have to be anything thick, or you know. Now, one thing about these pots, and I'll show you here. The reason I like these pots, a couple reasons. One, they look like bonsai. They look like real bonsai pots. But it's it's got this grating down here, which gives it good drainage. But then there are these little holes all the way around. And those holes has that drainage, and then it has these holes. And those holes are specifically so that you can put wire through there and wire the bonsai in place so that it doesn't come out. <clears throat> So for this, I think I'm going to use two pieces of wire. And I'll just cut them about the same length. Or 
go. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these in at different pots, uh, spots in the <laughs> different pots in different spots in the pot at at an angle. So at the bottom of this pot, I'll have an X, and I'll have these wires coming up that I can wrap around the root base. And there we go. And there we go. So, two pieces of wire gives me four, four wiring points. And so now all I have to do is, I want to put a little soil on the bottom just to make sure that this has everything that it needs. So we're going to put a little soil in there just to make sure that the roots are sitting in some soil. And again, I want to angle this and again, I think before I told you that uh, when it comes to bonsai, you don't really center it in the pot. <clears throat> so I'm going to set it off to the side where it's cascading over. And then I'm going to lean it backwards a bit so that we have more of that trunk movement. And I'm going to just begin uh, filling in back here just so I have some stability. that all packed in there. All right. <clears throat> so now what I want to do is I want to take, where's my wire? Uh oh, what did I do with my wire? I've got three wires. Where's the fourth one? There it is. There it is. So what I want to do is I want to bring it over the top, these two, and I'm just going to I think this root is kind of big, so I'm going to go ahead and cut it off a little bit. Because I really don't want it wrapped around in circles, so I'm going to just move that over here. And, and, and uh, later on we'll talk about Nibari. So I want, to, I want this root to really be over here and not, not curling around the front of the trunk. And that's something we'll talk about later. Now we can we can tuck that back here. All right, so now I have my wire, and I'm just going to twist it like so. Get a couple of twists on it, and then what I will do <clears throat> I'll take my square nose pliers, and I will just grab where I twisted it, and I will continue to twist twist this over and over again. And as you can see, it's starting to to tighten up. Of course, hopefully what I didn't do was uh, break the wire. Let's see here. All right, there we go. All right, the best laid plans, right? So what did I do? All right, didn't get that tight. So let's, let's start over here. This untwisted. I don't know how I did that. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. Kind of weird. All right. So what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, I think I'll take it back here then. <clears throat> so the idea is to, to try to get this as snug as you can because you want to be able to want that to stay in the pot and not come out. Now let's see if I get that. There we go. That's much better. You know, sometimes it just takes a couple tries. And now I can cut that excess off. There we go. That one 
here. And it's, it's fairly stable, but I want to make it even more stable. So I think I'm going to wrap it around that tree one time. And then bring this over. Just do the old twisty tie thing. Take my pliers. Twist that until it snugs up nice. There we go. Yeah, see? The pot, the pot stays there. The tree stays there. It's all good. And Continue to put some soil in here. Again, I'm just using what was already covering the roots of this tree or this juniper and letting it start to feel comfortable in this environment since it's got the same old soil. Pack that in the best we can. Now you can take chopsticks or uh, skewers, bamboo skewers, and you can, if you're using specifically, especially if you're using uh, bonsai soil, you can you can uh, take those skewers or chopsticks and just kind of poke in there, and it will take all that granular type soil that, that people use and uh, get it in all the, the voids and crevices and everything. So, Alright, that's pretty good for now. Pretty good for now. So my tree is, is uh, leaning, there we go, get that more, more straight. And then we've got the cascading branch, which we're going to clean up a little bit. Uh, but uh, it, it is now a semi-cascade. And this would be the front of the tree. And again, over time, these are going to grow. And they're going to create alternating pads as you go. And we're going to clean this up here in a little bit. But before I do that, I want to go ahead and wire this piece in the back. <clears throat> and to do that, I actually have... Perfect piece of wire, I think. And I mentioned before about the two branch principle, how important that is or how, how helpful that can be. But when, when you don't have two branches, again, you, you got to do with what you got to do. And in this case, I really don't have two branches to use, so I just hook it around the trunk and then I wrap it around the branch and again we're uh, trying not to trap any of those branches that come off of course if it's growing underneath we don't care about it move that out of the way getting into the green part because the very tip of this is green. And we don't need all that so we're just going to cut it off. Alright, so I've wired it and so the idea now is to, to raise that up like so. And hopefully that wire is strong enough to do that. I don't think it is. So just like the best laid plans, sometimes you have to, I don't know, I, I think that did it. That did it. Yeah. All right. 
my wife was coming outside, so I was shaking my head no to her because I didn't want her to interrupt me in what I'm doing here. <clears throat> All right, so there it is. This is uh, DIY uh, from bush to bonsai in less than a day. And uh, in reality, uh, we could do some more to this, and we're going to do that. So <clears throat> we're going to trim this off. And we're going to trim all these. Again, we want to be able to see the trunk, even the cascading trunk, so that we know what we're dealing with. I'm going to cut, cut some of this off that's closer to it, just to give it some more defined trunk line when it comes to the cascade. All right. Now, as you can see, we've got this, this cascade, <clears throat> and it comes pretty low. And as, as I was mentioning earlier, I think, that's, I think that's a bit much. I don't know. I, you know, I, I think, I think it, it might be better if it maybe stopped here. Uh, but I don't know. It's, it's kind of a, or maybe, maybe stopped here. And so what I'm going to do is, is if you remember, talked about decide where you want the end to be and then cut just above it. So there we go. So now, now this is the tip of that cascade and we cut all that off. All right. Now let's just clean this up a bit. Cut all these ones, all the all these ones, all the uh, branches on the bottom off, and we'll take all these little ones off. Got some bigger, bigger ones on the bottom. We don't want those. We're just cluttering everything up. Oh yeah, much better, much better. Let's get that one. All right. See how it's cleared that out a bit? So we're going to continue to do that, get rid of all these bottom bottom branches. And, uh, clean that up. Again, what I'm doing is, is, oh, see, now there I, I made a mistake, right? That's, that's not what I wanted to do. But guess what? It happens. It certainly happens. You grab a hold of the wrong thing and cut the wrong thing off. But, like I said, it'll grow back. It will grow back. So I'm, I'm trying to, to look at how this is growing. And creating some air in here and trying to cut off the ones that are on top, all the ones that are on bottom, so that we can get the air in here and then this can grow to be a nice little pad. All right. Now some people might wire this already. Um, I'm not. I'm not that confident at, about it right now. Uh, and what I what I plan to do is, as this summer goes on, as this year goes on, I'll be making refinements to this, just like this. I, you know, this will this will make a nice little pad that way, and we'll be able to, to clean some of these up and, and flatten that out and give it a nice. It's already got a nice arc to it, but. So this is 
like I said, and again, these, these things will be wired back and they'll create these flat pads. And I could probably use one millimeter wire to do that, but for right now, I think I would feel more comfortable just letting them grow and thicken up a bit so that as I, as I manhandle this thing, I don't really do a lot of damage to it. So here you go. Here is your juniper, your creeping juniper uh, from bush to bonsai in less than a day. So this is, this is the finished product for today. And again, it's going to continue to, to evolve as it goes along its bonsai journey. But I did want to just take a, a second. I, I paused the video there just so I could show you uh, the difference between what we ended up with. So I'm, I'm measuring. This is <clears throat> five and a quarter inches. So the bush that we started with was five and a quarter inches from the soil uh, to the top of it. Now we have a tree that is 11 and a half inches tall. And we have a cascade that hangs over the pot uh, a good seven inches. So just think about that. It was, it was a big, huge bush, flat bush, if you will, and all of this material and whatever fell on the ground came off of that and <clears throat> we ended up with something that was six inches taller than it originally started out and that's just first of all by doing a little trimming uh, the angle we planted it in the pot and then by taking some wire and creating the the main trunk that goes up and we did that in an informal way instead of creating some sort of straight trunk which you know it, it's to each his own my wife likes trees that have perfectly straight trunks. I like trees with character, with trunks with character, and this one has character, it comes up and it has a hard angle, and then it, it goes into this more slender branch, it's going to create that taper, and then it kind of curls around into its apex, and it's, it's six inches taller than it was. So I want to thank you for joining me here on Bonsai Journey. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and remember, this is not the finished product. The finished product for this particular bonsai is 5, 10, 15, 20 years down the road. And we need to remember that not only in bonsai but in life it's a journey and we're nowhere near where we're going to be by the end of time. So I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you liked this episode of Bonsai Journey, please like, share, and comment uh, and share your comments with me. Thank you and have a great week. Bye.